This is Omeo, an electric powered level 4 autonomous shuttle designed and developed in New Zealand. And no, it's not a concept vehicle, in fact it's currently being piloted and used by the public in South Korea. I was invited to come and see this cool piece of tech in action, and well, how could I say no? Autonomous vehicles are going to revolutionize the way we commute profoundly. You've likely already seen videos of Tesla's full self-driving beta, or perhaps Waymo's robo-taxi service. Both are extremely impressive and will play a vital role towards an autonomous future. However, I've always been curious to know how autonomous technology will play a role in public transportation, and Omeo is intended for exactly that. This particular Omeo is being piloted by the Korean Transport Institute and Lotte Data Communications Company, in a city called Sejong in South Korea. And if you've ever visited Korea before, the first thing you'll notice about Sejong is how vastly different it is from Seoul. The city is only 10 years old, it's extremely modern, and the terrain is very flat. That, combined with the city's high quality infrastructure, makes Sejong the ideal testing ground for an autonomous vehicle. The first thing you'll notice when seeing an Omeo in person is that it's an oddly shaped vehicle. It's 4.7 meters long, 2.2 meters wide, and 2.3 meters high. It has six LiDAR sensors, one for each corner of the vehicle, and two hemispherical for the front and rear of the shuttle. And for backup, there are six ultrasonic sensors. It's fair to say that this vehicle was not designed for speed or aesthetics. Not that it looks bad, but this vehicle was clearly designed with interior space being a priority. And you really feel that the first time you step inside. A huge benefit of the Omeo being a level 4 autonomous vehicle means there's no need for a driver's seat or steering wheel, giving plenty of space to comfortably fit up to 13 passengers. So now that I was on board, Dr. Moon from the Korean Transport Institute handed me a travel card to demonstrate how the vehicle would take payments from the public. It's the same payment system you'd use if you were to say, take a bus in Seoul. Though right now it only charges you 10 Korean won, that's just under 1 cent in US currency. Essentially it's just there for show right now, to help make the Omeo feel like any other form of public transport. So once the doors were shut, with a quick tap on the screen, off we went. Now I have to admit, this was my first time stepping into an autonomous vehicle, period. I had no idea what to expect or how I'd feel about the whole thing, but the best way I can describe the experience is that you go through three phases. Phase 1, you're excited, curious, and definitely a little bit anxious. The idea of a computer driving you is a little unsettling at first. But once you realize, okay, this computer is performing its task and nothing bad is happening, you quickly move to phase 2. You begin to accept the fact that a computer is driving you and that it's safe. You then take a moment to admire just how far technology has come. Then comes phase 3, which surprised me the most, boredom. You become fully complacent with the idea that a computer is driving you, you have zero concerns about your safety, and sadly the excitement is gone. Boredom ensues, and you find yourself wanting to take out your phone to check your socials. But what shocked me is how quickly I got from phase 1 to phase 3. I'm typically quite the paranoid passenger, but I got fully accustomed to the idea of a computer driving me within about 5 minutes. And my assistant producer had a similar experience. Now when I say it gets boring that may sound like a bad thing, but I guess that's exactly how it should feel. I mean, this thing is not a Ferrari. It's not meant to be a roller coaster ride. It's public transport. It's meant to take you from A to B and to do so safely. You should feel just as you would when taking a bus, tram, or train. Now, typically, level 4 autonomous vehicles don't require a driver whatsoever. However, Omeo is still in its pilot phase, therefore, a safety operator does remain on board in case something goes wrong. And you're probably thinking, but Jono, how can a safety operator possibly intervene when this vehicle doesn't have a driver's seat? Well, with a joystick, of course. No, seriously, with the joystick. This safety operator demonstrated the joystick by maneuvering the Omeo around this illegally parked vehicle. And hey, it works, so why not? And future versions of the Omeo will be controllable via a remote office, should human intervention be required. To learn more about the technology inside this autonomous shuttle, I spoke with Mahmoud Hikmet, Head of Research and Development at Omeo in New Zealand. Okay, so Omeo vehicles work sort of like a tram, but rather than using steel rails in the ground, we lay down virtual tracks and software. This means that rather than having to carry out millions of dollars worth of infrastructure changes, we can just change the route in software as the need arises. Since Omeo vehicles are aimed at public transportation, we know the areas that we're going to be servicing, and that puts us at a really, really 
big advantage here where we can plot out the route that we're going to be on and know what to expect. So we're not solving this problem of having to know about all this uncertainty that might crop up. We know what's going to happen and that's a much simpler problem to solve than say a level 5 vehicle that needs to go everywhere, even places that it's never been before. There's a saying that anyone can build a bridge that stands up, but only an engineer can build a bridge that barely stands up. Limiting the technical scope is something that's really, really important in engineering uh, because it allows you to solve a problem quicker, cheaper, and with using less resources overall. If you're interested in learning more about autonomous vehicles, Mahmood has some great content on the topic on his YouTube channel. So if you're interested, I'll leave a link in the description below. Now, after riding in the Omeo for about half an hour, I wanted to understand how safe this vehicle was for pedestrians. So I asked the engineers if we could put Omeo's obstacle avoidance to the test with me being the obstacle. Quick disclaimer, this was all done under the supervision of professionals and in a controlled environment. I specifically wanted to see how fast the Omeo would react if I walked in front of it while it was driving. And being the cheeky bugger I am, I was a little naughty and stepped out a few seconds later than the engineers advised me to. I'll admit it was a tad scary, but the technology worked. The Omeo was able to detect me in time and stop to avoid a collision. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this Omeo is already open to the public. However, it's not for the purpose of getting people from A to B. Right now, a key objective for the Korean Transport Institute is building the public's trust with this technology. This autonomous shuttle is uh, the, we call, you know, level four automated vehicle. We want to uh, make the shuttle running in the urban area and the typical area to connect uh, the living village uh, to the mainstream of uh, the public transportation. Uh, that's the reason why we want to uh, make the people change their traffic pattern utilizing this vehicle instead of passenger vehicle in the way of their transportation uh, within a few miles. In the morning and after, we're going to save our space of parking area. We're going to save our people on road uh, suffering from the congestion and suffering from traffic accident. Okay, this is what we want to make the goal. So maybe we uh, think that year, uh, from year 2023, 20 vehicles uh, to be studied at you know, firstly implemented in the city and uh, more, uh, year 2025, the city is planned now for more than 200 vehicles running on the city, whole city uh, you know, at the same time. Autonomous vehicles still have a ways to go before dominating our roads, but as you can see, the technology is making quick progress. And perhaps we'll see this technology more widely utilized in public transport before we do in passenger vehicles. Before I go, I'd like to quickly talk about the situation in Ukraine. Over the past few weeks, I've been thinking of ways in which I can help. And thanks to you guys and this platform you've helped me build, perhaps we can make a small difference together. A highly talented Ukrainian 3D artist I've worked with in the past named Skiva is selling his crypto art online and is giving all the proceeds to humanitarian and defense efforts for his country. This guy's work is insanely good and his art has already contributed a lot to the cause. So if you're into NFTs and digital art and want to support Ukraine, I'll be leaving a link to where you can buy his art in the description below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.